Hey guys, wait, what? Nvidia launched a competitive card and priced it lower than AMD? No way. When Nvidia did a 180 and unlaunched RTX 4080 12 gig, they did themselves a massive favor. I'm fairly confident to say that right here we have that card and it is an RTX 4070 Ti. This particular card is made by Asus from their tough lineup. And what do I mean by a favor? Well, they had a chance to release two cards so far, 4080 and 4090, and CMD released their 7900 XT and XTX. Then reassess the market and slot this card in at MSRP of $799 to shake up the market, making it harder to pick which card is best now since depending on your budget and requirements, all cards, besides 4090 of course, are competitive. So let's dive right in and explore what's going on here. First of all, this card will not have a Founders Edition variant, so you can only pick up a partner model. And unfortunately, that also means there will be a struggle to get cards close to MSRP, but I hope there will be some available. 4070 Ti features 7680 CUDA cores, 240 of the latest Tensor cores, and 60 RT cores, as well as the new dual NVENC encoder, which supports AV1 of course. The 12GB of GDDR6 video memory is running at 21 gigabit speed on a 192-bit bus. While it is pretty narrow bus, the memory speed is high, so we'll have to see if that affects the performance. As far as this particular tough card is concerned, we'll place it right next to our Asus Tough Gaming 7900 XTX, it looks comically small. Let's see how it performs on our standard AMD Ryzen 7700 X Testbench. By the way, we did a little bit of overclocking on this card and the results are very interesting. But first, let's start with our stress test where we ran 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme on loop to check out frequency, temperature, noise performance, as well as power consumption. In the frequency test, we see 4070 Ti hit around 2.8 GHz and drop down by about 30 MHz and stay there for the duration of the test. The overclock we did was 200 MHz on the core and 500 MHz boost on the memory. And here we found this being an easy bump to performance while staying very stable. Stable seems to be a thing here. Look at how stable frequency is while at stock and overclock enabled. Next up is GPU temperature and here while it looks rather messy, we see changes in temperature just like the other cards had changes in frequency. It is certainly above the rest of the cards, especially the overclocked version, but generally peaking at low 70s. At the same time, we found it only hits 37.5 dBA while at stock as compared to 39.3 dBA of the 7900 XTX and 40.1 dBA on the 7900 XT reference card. In the next graph, we see wattage over time. This is measured using NVIDIA PCAT and we're measuring both power from PCIe port as well as directly from the power supply. The 4070 Ti comes in considerably below most cards. It makes sense as it is a lower end card after all, but even with a slight overclock, it still has lower power consumption to its closest competitor, the 7900 XT. Power consumption is not a reliable measure of a graphics card performance on its own, as other cards with higher performance may have higher power consumption as well. However, by taking into account both power consumption and performance, we can gouge the power efficiency of the card. In the case of 4070 Ti, it performs worse than 7900 XT by about 3% at stock, but outperforms the XTX variant by almost 5%. Interestingly, overclocking 4070 Ti actually improves its power efficiency, which is unusual as overclocking typically reduces efficiency. However, the improvement is very small. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing for more tech videos like this. With synthetic tests out of the way, let's see how this card stacks up in real life tests, starting with World War Z, where at 1080p it actually beats out both AMD 7900 cards, especially on the 1 percentiles. Overclock in this game provides another 6% boost on average FPS. In 1440p, the tables turn and here, while at stock, it performs the worst from our lineup and is only marginally faster than 6900 XT, while overclocked. Please note that our graphs may be sorted in a way that prioritizes total performance over average or 1 percentile performance alone. This is a deliberate choice we've made in order to provide a more comprehensive view of performance of products that are being tested. Moving on to 4K, and we here again see 4070 Ti down towards the bottom of the stack with 7900 XT leading by about 10%. When it comes to XTX, that comfortably beats out the whole list of cards. But there is a catch. Check out this FPS per watt or in this case FPS per 100 watt graph. Here unfortunately we don't have results for the XT variant, but XTX is actually the worst performer out of them all. Next up is Shadow of a Tomb Raider, and at 1080p 4070 Ti has a slight edge over the AMD cards, but just like the last game, at times we're actually CPU bound at this resolution, thus results are not conclusive. 
Going up to 1440p, we start seeing a better picture. Here, the new car beats out the $900 7900XT and is only 13% behind the $1000 XDX card. Overclocking closes the gap by another 5%. At 4K, both lower end cards from Nvidia and AMD, if you can call them that, are neck and neck, while 7900XTX is 19% faster on average FPS, but not much faster on 1 percentiles. The next game is Borderlands 3, and this is a game essentially made for AMD hardware, and it shows. With 1080p resolution, 4070Ti provides slightly more performance than 6900XT, but is 11% behind 7900XT. In 1440p, the difference between 4070Ti and 7900XT increases to 16%, which is higher scaling than the price difference between these cards. And in 4K, it increases further to 20%. In the game Horizon Zero Dawn, we will skip 1080p and go straight to 1440p resolution, where Nvidia card slightly outperforms 7900XT and an overclock provides an additional 3% boost in performance. At this resolution, the XTX is only 6% faster which may be not that significant if you play at this resolution. When we increase the resolution to 4K, the AMD cards take the lead, with the 7900XT having 5% higher FPS than the stock 4070Ti and the XTX having 23% advantage. However, overclocking the Nvidia card does bring its performance in line with the 7900XT at 4K. When we check out battle efficiency though, the story changes. Nvidia 4070Ti has a perfect scaling and maintains the same FPS per 100 watts from the overclock. While 7900XTX has much higher performance, it sucks back much more power, almost 22% more, so take it as you will. Next, I want to cover two ray trace titles with some interesting results. Starting with F1, where 4070Ti outperforms 7900XT by 7.5% in standard mode without any upscaling. This is still very much the same with DLSS and FSI enabled. Nvidia does tend to have better 1 percentiles in performance though, but with DLSS 3 enabled, 4070Ti is able to outperform XTX version, which is $200 more expensive card. In Cyberpunk 2077, without upscaling, we have Nvidia cars just dunk all over AMD. This is because we have ray trace enabled in cycle mode, but even with 4G90, it is not really a pleasant experience as far as frame rates go. When we enable upscaling on both sides, the frame rates on the RTX 4070 Ti become playable, even without DLSS 3. However, when we enable DLSS 3, the 4070 Ti is able to deliver a decent 4K experience with all settings maxed out. This is ultimately where Nvidia currently has a strong edge. AMD did mention frame generation technologies coming in the future, but we'll have to wait and see. At this time, we can only test what is available right now, and that is actually a good piece of advice for you all. Don't go out of your way and purchase future promise. Get what you need and what is available right now, so you're not disappointed tomorrow. In addition to testing 4070 Ti's performance in gaming applications, we also ran several productivity workloads to see how it performs in tasks such as rendering and 3D modeling. When processing standard render in Blender using CUDA platform, the 4070 Ti was around 19% slower than 4080 at stock settings. However, overclocking 4070 Ti reduces the render time by about 3 seconds. In the V-Ray benchmark, which we also used CUDA platform, the 4070 Ti is about 33% slower than 4080. In this case, overclocking 4070 Ti resulted in a 5.5% improvement in performance. Overall, the 4070 Ti appears to be a strong graphics card, particularly in terms of performance in ray tracing and DLSS applications. It competes well with the 7900 XT in standard rasterized games, and its launch price of $799 US dollars is competitive at the current market. However, this price may still be considered high compared to what cards of this class used to cost in the past. It is possible that the cost of this high-end graphics card has become the new norm and may not return to the lower levels as in previous years. For example, just a few years ago, RTX 2080 was released for $799, and RTX 2070 was $599. However, it is important to note that the market for graphics cards is constantly evolving, with new technologies and improvements being developed all the time. This can drive up the cost of the high-end graphics cards, as manufacturers need to recoup their research and development costs. Ultimately, the price of the graphics cards is a subjective matter, and what one person considers to be a fair price may differ from another one's perspective. Some may feel that 4070Ti's 799 price tag is justified given its performance and features, while others may think it's too expensive. It's up to individual consumers to decide what they're willing to pay for the graphics card based on their budget and needs. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.